Hello, this is Dr. Gay from First Second MRI, and this is a 45-year-old female who recently twisted the ankle uh, while walking, and she felt a pop in the foot and has a lot of pain. Pain is throughout the foot and ankle, but most pronounced laterally. She put a marker over on the outside where she's hurting, way over here. And when we look out here, we see a couple things. Number one, the perineus longus and brevis tendons come down here and wrap around the distal fibula here. They look a little too thick, so we know something's going on there. The fluid in the tendon sheath here, the perineus tendon sheath. And if we follow these down, there's one that wraps underneath the cuboid bone. And here's the cuboid bone. Here's the calcaneus. And the perineus longus wraps underneath here. And then it goes centrally. And we just lose it right here. We just don't see it very well. And there's a fluid here. Something looks very unusual here. But this is the perineus longus tendon. And it is torn. It's difficult to appreciate on the sagittal images. The patient has lots of other findings here throughout the midfoot, lots of arthritis and oh, inflammation throughout her sinus tarsi. So probably sinus tarsi syndrome here, and she has an erosion, a sinus angle erosion, a big uh, calcaneal spur. So lots of findings, but the really interesting one is that perineus longus tendon tear. So we're going to look at that better. Here it looks like it's torn, like partially torn at least, and it's odd that it has this brightness up here, but this is related to redundancy and maybe even some partial tearing or strain of the uh, proximal perineus longus tendon here. And now we're going to try to see the distal attachment because we don't see it well in this. We're going to pull up the coronal images. And they're really the best to look at the perineus longus. So this is lateral here. We see the fibula. We see two things over here, one, two, and the one on the outside is going to be the brevis. And let's see if we can follow that down. Here it is right here. This is the brevis coming down here to attach at the fifth metatarsal base. That looks good. There's that marker. Now we're going to look for the longus. And it's too thick up here. This is the longus. And it's, uh, again, strained or maybe redundant and strained, making it look a little thick. Lots of edema in the subcutaneous soft tissues. And as we follow this down, it's going to make a loop underneath the cuboid bone here. And here it is making the loop. As it goes underneath, you see it's very thick. A lot of fluid signal. Here's the perineus brevis. It's dark. This is bright, so the, this is very difficult to appreciate, but um, uh, when it makes loops like this, you can get magic angle phenomenon and um, abnormal signal, but this is clearly abnormal. Um, just way too thick, way too much fluid signal within that. And as it comes across here horizontally, it's going to loop all the way from the lateral side to the medial side to the first metatarsal base. So here it's starting to make its loop underneath. Now it's horizontal, and then we just lose it. So it's, this is the torn end about right here, and there is a fluid-filled gap that goes from here over to where it attaches right here. This is the first metatarsal base, so somewhere in this region it's going to attach. There's maybe a little stump of a tendon, but there's a fluid-filled tendon gap related to a ruptured and mildly retracted perineus longus tendon. And this is a very rare. I don't see hardly any of these. Um, but interesting, another proximal tendon, again, is redundant and probably strained as well, causing it to appear abnormal. And that's it, a ruptured perineus longus tendon from the distal attachment, and that's best seen on the coronal images. Thank you very much.